This is the answer AX in NP01 from Vaxi, and today we'll be focusing on the former. In its box, you get the mouse itself, and well, that's pretty much it. No complaints from me, but at the price, spare mouse feet would have been nice for those that opt for harder pads, though replacements are cheap enough. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Vaxi, I wouldn't hold it against you, but they're essentially former Zowie employees, and much like Rocket Jump Ninja, with extra fine in the MZ1, Vaxi appear to be collaborating with former professional players, and that's over product reviewers to develop their shapes. I mean, it's not rocket science. Once you've got a good mouse, you simply transplant the internals into a different shell, combine it with some minor improvements, such as debounce adjustment here, and voila. So the real question is, did it work with the Outset AX? Now we've been sent the matte black variant, which comes in at a length of 117 millimeters, height of 43, and width at the grip position of roughly 59. Weight comes in at just 79 grams as well, and I'm more than happy to report there's no creaking, rattling, or accidental side button actuations when squeezing. And that's because I did encounter the latter on my first batch, NP01. So they've made some essential improvements, and I love it. Interestingly enough, if I pull up a bunch of competitor shapes, then on first glance, you'd probably place them in this order, with the IntelliMouse Pro being the largest, followed by the Death Adder, EC2, Outset AX, and finally NP01. However, on holding each one with my 19.5 by 10 cm hand size in palm grip, I'd like to ensure that the end result is actually rather different, and instead I'd place them in this order, possibly even with the Outset AX feeling the largest due to its fuller feel in the palm. Now this is entirely due to the back of the mouse, which is near impossible to demonstrate on camera, but grip type definitely influences this as if I hold it further back, it feels smaller. So definitely get some other opinions. For me though, that's something I have to consciously do each time I grab the mouse, and I'm not really about that life. But the good thing is though, if you're happy to do it, weight balance is still okay. The main thing I do want to say though is, despite its fuller feel, I have no issues with minor vertical adjustments on this mouse, and there was no transitional period on changing to it either. Specifications between the Outset AX and MP01 are near identical. Mouse 1 and 2 utilize Hawano 60G switches, which if we disregard the speed of optical variants, have resulted in some of my favorite feeling buttons. They are separated from its top shell and easy enough to push in from front to back, potentially opening up a wide range of grips no matter your hand size. Honestly, the only annoying thing about anything regarding this mouse is how loud every single button is, and potentially the stiffer middle click combined with how recessed it is. But providing your partner approves of all the noise, then you shouldn't have a problem. But let this be your one and only warning. Here's a listen. Now one thing I do appreciate over my EC2 is that the side buttons are closer to my death adder, less of that sponginess, and it's very easy to roll my thumb to activate them, which is appreciated. Underneath the mouse, you'll find two 0.6mm 100% PTFE mouse feet, to which you'll have no complaints, and Pixart's PMW3389 sensor with a DPI button that will toggle between 400, 800, 1600, and 3200, with no smoothing on the first three. Two of the buttons are also present, which will enable you to adjust the polling rate between standard values, and the button debounce time between two, four and eight milliseconds. Now there isn't a button for lift off distance, but you can set this to low, medium and high through various button combinations when plugging in the mouse. Finally, it's two meter shoelace type cable is not exactly paracord like, but I would say it's perfect for a bungee. It's raised up at the front to avoid contact with the pad and it's also stiff for the first inch or two making for a perfect pairing with my Zowie Command 2. I'd probably liken it to the cable bundled with my Defada V2 Pro and Viper, only it's softer to the touch, and I personally see no need to change it. Anyway, this is my first Vaxi product, which means a full test to determine an expected level of performance. So let's get started. First up is mouse acceleration and moving the outset AX from left to right of my MPX390 mouse pad, both slow and fast, shows that we end up in roughly the same place. This of course means there's no acceleration present and players can then add their own preferred amount afterwards, to which many do, and that's particularly true of arena FPS games like Quake. Max tracking speed should also be around 10.16 meters per second, to which I can't get anywhere near, 
and that's from swinging my mouse around like a madman. I've also had no malfunctions over the last week or so of testing, not whilst rocket jumping, nor 180s and flicking. Button latency is seemingly incredible for a mechanical switch, and I need only include a snapshot of Pizogle's testing over at Tech Power Up. This is to be expected given their history in CSGO, where they probably now want to entice players over from their loyalty towards Zowie. I've also encountered no double clicks with a debounce time set to two, though there's always the possibility this could develop over time, so it is nice they offer four and eight, I guess. Though at eight, I'd probably want to replace the mouse just because. Proof can be found in Shoot Mania though, as there are no issues with variable jumps at any of the settings, where its jump height is directly influenced by how long the button is held down, i.e. I can mini jump for days without issue. This also means there are no issues with full height rocket jumps in quick, because both mouse 1 and mouse 2 can be pushed down simultaneously without delay, i.e. you won't find yourself jumping before you shoot or shooting before you jump. You'll always reach maximum height no matter the setting. And finally, there are three liftoff distance levels, low, medium, and high. Low is the default, which is below one DVD, i.e. 1.2 millimeters, whilst medium and high are somewhere between one and two, i.e. less than 2.4. On many mice, the lowest setting can prove to be an issue for me as I often tilt the mouse whilst tracking, but here I encountered no such issues and I left it on low. So my final thoughts? Well, I'm late yet again to the party with the review, so let's jump straight to the point. Is the Outset AX better than an EC1 or EC2? Because that's the question I know you're asking, and well, no, but not because it's worse, but because it's inherently different and instead lands somewhere between the two. In fact, besides the fact former Zowie employees have worked on this mouse, I wouldn't directly compare it to any of Zowie's offerings. I mean, if you like either of the EC mice, I wouldn't switch, but if you want something closer to the size of an EC2 in width, whilst being taller and more full of feeling like the EC1, then this could very well do the job. And that's why I might also recommend the shaped G403 users too. If you can get past how loud the buttons on this mouse can be, and particularly the scroll wheel, then it's a mouse that does not lack in performance, and a mouse that will not let you down in the most casual or competitive of environments. But in a sense of latency is on point, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time reviewing this mouse, most notably because I had no issue transitioning from my EC2 and Death Adder despite their differences. Do I think it will be my main? Probably not, because I do prefer the other two in hand, but it could be if necessary, and it will certainly serve as an excellent backup or a mouse for a second system. I think if the grip width stayed as is, but I shaved a little off the back at various angles, it'd probably fit me perfectly, and I suppose that's the beauty of it. There's no doubt in my mind that the Outset AX was created by somebody who wanted to improve the EC line for them, and in that vein, it's absolutely going to fit somebody else like a glove, and it will 100% help carry them to victory. Now, disregarding shape, if I could change one thing on this mouse, it'd probably be to add a lighter middle click and to change the outset logo from white to a satin black. But I suppose the former shows up better on camera and that's exactly what they need as they try to penetrate the market. Anyway, that about wraps it up. If you liked the video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and do stop by my Twitch stream where I broadcast weekly. Huge shout out to Vaxi for shipping out the mouse, and if you have any questions or comments, then you can leave them down below and I'll get back to you. But for now, take care, keep gaming, and I'll catch you in the next video.